Reading through 2 Corinthians, we uh, are going to look at uh, chapter 8, or at least as much of it as we can this morning. And uh, it's Paul is, is going to be talking about the subject of giving, uh, which I am I'm thankful to be part of uh, not, a, not a rich church, but a generous church. Uh, which, which I think is great. There, I wouldn't say we're a, a white-collar church. <laughs> Maybe it's our roots in uh, the Mill Village that probably is, you know, we have blue-collar roots being from uh, the Mill Village right behind us. But uh, I, w- I wouldn't say we're a rich church, but we are a very generous church. And so uh, I- I'm thankful for that. And, and Paul's going to be uh, thankful for a similar uh, region of churches in Macedonia that they they weren't rich, but they were generous. And he commends them for that uh, in these verses. So 2 Corinthians chapter 8, uh, in, in these verses, uh, we'll see as he starts chapter 8, we want you to know, brothers, about the grace of God that's been given among the churches of Macedonia. Uh, Paul is going to talk about these churches in Macedonia uh, and is going to speak about the example that they are of giving, of generosity. And in, in the first few words of the subject, that he's, he's going to show that, that this giving, this generosity is an opportunity and, and a willingness to... Uh, to give a gift from the grace of God. He's going to refer to giving as grace, uh, which that's, that's so loaded in a beautiful description of, of what giving is. And we will see as he unpacks it, as he refers to uh, God's grace on them and then their uh, ability to give uh, in grace as well. But these churches in Macedonia that he's referring to, uh, the northern part of, of Greece was in a region called Macedonia. The southern part uh, was where Corinth was. The, the, the church that he's writing to is in the southern region. But Paul's referencing the northern region as examples of generosity. That northern region would be churches like the church in Philippi, uh, the church in Thessalonica, uh, the church in Berea, those, those cities that we're familiar with. That would be the region of Macedonia that Paul's referencing. And uh, as we see in verse 2, For in a severe test of affliction, their abundance of joy... And their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. And so we see in this region uh, that they were not wealthy. They had gone through times of affliction. Uh, they, it was a poor region, but they still gave generously. Uh, and he's referencing their giving to the collection that Paul was uh, going around collecting to give to the Christians in Jerusalem. We've seen earlier in the letter him referencing uh, the collection for the the Christians in Jerusalem that were going through an extremely difficult time. And uh, this generosity was for that kind of special offering for the church in Jerusalem. But uh, the reason this area of Macedonia was so... uh, poverty stricken at the time or, or had a lack of abundance was because uh, the, the Romans took most of their wealth because this was the home region of Alexander the Great. And so uh, as they conquered, they uh, took from this area probably kind of in spite because this was the home territory of Alexander the Great. And so even though they weren't rich, they gave generously. For they gave according to their means, as I can testify, and beyond their means, of their own accord. And so, uh, I love this in that they may not have given much. It could have been a a small amount, especially compared to maybe what other churches had given. It, It could not, it may have been a very small amount, 
but it was beyond their means. Uh, in other words, even though they didn't have much, they gave an abundance. They gave very uh, generously. It's kind of the, the same idea of the widow in, in Luke chapter 21, where she only gave two mites, <laughs> which you would look at that and it's like, you know, throwing a few quarters in the, in the metal box as you come in on Sunday morning. You're like, well, that's not much. But if that's all that widow had were those two quarters that she dropped in, then she gave, uh, she gave beyond her means. In other words, she gave everything she had. You look at the amount, and you're like, well, she only gave 50 cents. But it was all she had. So she gave beyond uh, her means. Uh, and, and so she gave, I guess you could say, beyond her ability. And so it wasn't as much as the rich man, but, uh, uh, but he, he, she gave out of uh, abundance. And also, I love this last phrase in the verse I just read, verse 3. They gave of their own accord. In other words, they gave uh, freely. Paul didn't beg for them to give. He would not have been a beggar. He would not have begged them uh, to give money. Uh, but instead, they were, they were imploring Paul to be able to give. They were so eager to give that they were saying, Paul, we want to give to this. Let, let us give to this. Uh, I, I've, I've seen some parents and children have these arguments, you know, when you, no, no, dad, let me pay. No, I want to pay, you know, the argument over pain. They were, they were arguing to be able to give uh, to this, not Paul begging uh, to be able uh, for them to give. Verse four, begging us earnestly for the favor of taking part. Kind of jumped ahead. That was reiterating what I just said, that they were, Paul wasn't begging them. They were giving on their own accord. They were begging Paul to be able to participate uh, in the relief of the saints. And this, not as we expected, but they gave themselves first to the Lord and then by the will of God to us. And so uh, the, the, the example of this Macedonian region of, of churches, uh, is, it is practical proof that, that true generosity is not the prerogative of those that, that just enjoy uh, abundance. Uh, the most genuine uh, liberal giving is frequently displayed often by those that have the least. And we've, we've seen that uh, in life. Sometimes it's those that you know that are struggling that are the most eager to be generous in, in helping others. And then uh, we've also seen the other extreme of, of, of wealthy misers that, that keep it all for themselves and are not generous in their giving uh, with others. And so we see here why the Macedonians were such good examples in their giving. It wasn't the amount that they gave, uh, but they gave themselves first to the Lord, which should be uh, the focus of all of us. I, I mean, I could preach sermons on you need to tithe more <laughs> or you need to give more, but at the heart of it is we need to give ourselves to the Lord. And as those who are surrendered to the Lord, uh, the natural outworking of, of a life that's surrendered to the Lord is going to be generosity. Because we know that everything we have is a blessing from God. We know that, that everything we have is, is, is a gift that we have from Him that we are to be good stewards of. And so uh, if, if, if we're giving ourselves first to the Lord, then... Uh, we're going to be a generous people. And, and I'm not just referencing, you know, what you put in the offering plate directly toward the church. That, that is an important part of our giving, uh, of, of tithing money to church. But just generosity in general, even beyond uh, what you give to the church and how you're able to help uh, those in need and other uh, things in the community that support those that are less fortunate. And so... Uh, they were a great example, but uh, a great example in that they had given themselves to the Lord. They were a life surrendered to God, and because of that, the natural outflow was generosity and giving to others. Accordingly, we urge Titus that as he had started, so he should complete among you this act of grace. 
And so uh, we see reference to Titus again uh, as, as he was kind of the bearer of this letter. And he was going to Corinth to actually encourage them to follow through in what they had started. I don't know if you know people like this. Uh, they make a lot of verbal commitments, <laughs> but they struggle with actually following through. Uh, he'll remain nameless. I don't think he'll be watching this stream anyways. My, my girls are gone uh, at camp this week. So in the evenings, I've had a little more free time uh, to play golf. And a buddy of mine said, let's play golf. I said, great. This was uh, uh, Monday. Oh, Memorial Day. And I said, great. I'm pretty flexible today. When do you want to play? He said, one o'clock. I said, all right, 1230. Never mind. I can't. I got to go do something. I was like, okay. <laughs> After I'd waited around for one, I said, well, when can you play? Three o'clock. I said, okay. I'll head. I came up here working on a few things. All right. I'll meet you at three. About 245. Never mind. I told you three. I can't do three. We'll, we'll play tonight. Guess what? Over oh, three, that didn't work out either. So I just played with a, a different group. But uh, some some are quick to make commitments, right? And uh, there's a struggle sometimes in the follow through. The church in Corinth had talked a big game. Yeah, we're going to give. We'll give to that. Uh, but Titus was there to uh, encourage them to complete <laughs> this act of grace. Remember, act of grace is referencing this this giving. And so he was there to encourage them to complete the grace, to follow through uh, with their original intent and their uh, original, uh, what they had committed to do, uh, what they intended to do. Uh, and verse 7, but as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in all earnestness, and in your love, in our love for you, see that you excel in this act of grace also. Uh, and so uh, this is the fourth time now, I think, in this chapter that he's referenced giving money as grace. Uh, this is uh, a phrase that he's using over and over to uh, describe this giving of, of money. And it's, it's a beautiful thought that Paul uses the, the, the Greek word charis to describe financial means uh, in giving. Because the ability to give and, and the heart to give uh, go hand in hand. And uh, um, giving is, is a work of God's grace in us. As, as recipients of God's grace, uh, it is that work in our lives that makes us and inspires us to be generous. Uh, and it, it's a work done in our heart first uh, from God's grace. And uh, as one commentator I said, we read this week, we should never say, well, they just want to write the checks and not get involved. Giving, uh, we don't want to negate giving. Giving is uh, an act of, of, of sacrifice and it demonstrates God's changing work in our hearts that we're willing to sacrifice uh, for his cause. And so our giving should be like God's giving of grace to us. It was given freely. Uh, it was given generously uh, to us. And our giving should be the same. Uh, when God gives us out of grace, the motive of his giving is in him. It's not based on the one who receives. We don't deserve his grace and, and, and we shouldn't uh, have that attitude, but this is how we should give, out of a motivation of, of love, love of God and, and love of, of others. And so uh, it's not, we don't give with the expectation of getting paid back. That's not giving, that's loaning. Uh, and in the same way, God in, in has given grace to us, uh, knowing that it was all him making the payment, that there's, there's, we have nothing to offer in return other than a life uh, surrendered. I'll read a quote. Once you see the matter of giving is centered in the lovely word grace, it lifts the whole act away from mechanics, from pressure, from duty, from obligation and legalism. It lifts us up into the most lovely atmosphere and of activity which seeks by giving to convey to others 
all that's lovely and beautiful and good and glorious. What a lovely word this word is. For there's no area in the Christian life in which grace shines out so much, so beautifully, and so happily as when giving comes from the background of poverty. And so uh, we see grace shown uh, so much uh, through the Macedonians, even though they were not wealthy, they gave. I say this not as a command, verse 8, but to prove by the earnestness of others that your love also is genuine. And so Paul is emphasizing the fact that I'm not uh, bringing up you giving as a command uh, because forcing someone to give, that's not giving, right? That's taxation. (laughs) That's what we do for our government. That is forced giving uh, to something. That is not uh, what Paul is referencing. He is not taxing Uh, the church in Corinth, but asking that they give uh, generously. And so, uh, and it, Paul makes two important points. First, giving uh, can measure the sincerity of of someone's love. And it also, uh, Paul openly compared the giving of the Corinthian Christians to the giving of uh, the Macedonian uh, Christians as well. Um, Many of us think that we can love without giving, but uh, um, my little children, the Bible says, let us love with word and in deed. And we know that where our treasure is, there our heart is also. And so uh, loving and and generosity uh, go hand in hand. And so um, he's not comparing the amount they're giving, the Corinthians and the Macedonians, but uh, their, their level of, of generosity. All right, uh, we'll do uh, a few more verses before we end. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you by his poverty might become rich. So, Uh, From this context uh, and from how Paul has used the word grace in this passage, we know that Paul means that that you know the the giving of the Lord Jesus. This grace and giving have been used interchangeably in this chapter. And so we know the the giving of, of Jesus, that he was rich. Well, how was he rich? He was born from by a poor woman, uh, Mary, uh, in a stable, what do you mean Jesus was rich? That points to the fact that his deity existed long before he was born uh, here uh, and took on earthly body. Uh, He was uh, rich in that he uh, existed before Mary's womb and that he was uh, rich as as a member of the Trinity and that he was living in the riches and splendor of the ivory palaces of, of heaven uh, that we read about in Scripture, uh, full of glory and power and, and majesty and hit the riches that he enjoyed before adding humanity. Uh, they don't negate his riches or his uh, deity, but he, uh, he added, he became poor, uh, even when he was rich. And so he added humanity to that deity, uh, not, not replaced it. And so, for our, uh, so that by his poverty, we might become rich. Uh, as, as he was rich and had the security of, of, of heaven and the blessing of heaven, he took on humanity so that we may have that future blessing of the wealth of of eternity in heaven as well. Uh, Because for our sakes, uh, he became poor. And he lived an earthly life, uh, not a wealthy man. We don't want to over-exaggerate poverty because he was not a destitute beggar. You know, he wasn't in in front of a a shopping mall begging for money homeless. Uh, But 
he did say of himself, foxes have holes and birds of air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Uh, he was not wealthy, but we don't want to think of him as, you know, a, a, just a, a beggar on the side of the street uh, either. But, but the beautiful thing of this verse, for your sake, he became poor. Uh, why, this gives us the explanation of why Jesus accepted this simple life of, of poverty here on earth. And, and, and wealth wasn't what was so difficult uh, for him to take as he uh, became flesh. But he did it for our sakes. This was, when we say we know the grace of God, we know the giving of God, it's seen in the fact that for our sakes, uh, he became poor, that he accepted uh, a life of humility as, as taking on flesh. And he did it for our sakes. Why would Jesus need to become poor for our sakes? How do we benefit from this poverty? Uh, I'll give you a few. Because it shows us the, the giving heart of Jesus. It shows us... Uh, a great perspective on material things and that he was willing to live that life. It makes Jesus acceptable, or excuse me, accessible, not acceptable, accessible to us. Uh, it, it rebukes the, the pride that might refuse to come to a, a poor Savior. It gives others the privilege of giving to Jesus because it fulfilled the heart and will and plan of God, making salvation possible so we could have an endless list of why uh, Jesus became poor for our sakes. But because of, because of all that, we can uh, become rich. We can share in his eternal wealth uh, uh, as he came and shared in our poverty, in our humility here on earth. We'll read these final verses. And in this matter, I give my judgment. This benefits you, who a year ago started not only to do this work, but also to desire to do it. So he's again saying, all right, you committed to this. So now finish doing it as well, so that your readiness is desiring, uh, in desiring it may be matched by your completing it out of what you have. For if the readiness is there, it is acceptable according to what a person has, not according to what he does not have. And so uh, we see that he's now calling them uh, to, to do what it is they've committed to do. Uh, I, this was... An interesting quote from William Barclay, he said this, The devil will let you resolve as much as you'll like. The devil doesn't care when we make commitments, when we agree to do things. That doesn't bother the devil. Uh, the more the better, the devil believes. Just as long as you never carry it out. The tragedy of life so often is not that we have no high impulses, but that we fail to turn them into actions. So he's, you know, the devil doesn't care how many things we commit to, uh, because as long as they remain undone, uh, no skin in the game. But it's uh, the the following through, the doing it, uh, that that Satan will try and block. And so uh, that is why Paul is encouraging them to follow through with what they've uh, committed to do. And uh, of course. The amount the Corinthians give will probably be a whole lot more than the Macedonians because uh, they, they, they have a lot more. Um, but, but generosity can't be measured just by the amount. Someone could give a... Whoever, name the... Name, you know, uh, uh, fill in the... Warren Buffett could give a million dollars. And we would think that that's the most generous thing ever. But for someone that's worth almost a hundred billion, what's a million? <laughs> uh, so it's not the amount uh, that that is the concern here. It's the the generosity, uh, and and so when when the issue of giving's brought up, it's it's not how much am I supposed to get? What is that? What's that amount that's generous? Uh, it is. Uh, we want to give out of a. Uh, a, a a generous heart, uh, and it's going to be a different amount for 
uh, each person. Because if, if our question is, how, how little can I give and still be pleasing to God, then the heart's not in the right place. And, and remember that is the great example of Macedonians is they gave themselves to the Lord. And as a response, uh, they gave some of their finances. And so if our attitude is, is well, what, what percentage is the least amount that I think God will be pleased with? That's the wrong uh, heart uh, to begin with in, in giving. And so that's his encouragement to the church in Corinth. All right, we'll pick up in verse 13 uh, next week. And I meant to go a little further, but there's next week. So we'll pick up in verse uh, 13 and finish chapter 8 and begin uh, chapter 9 next week. But again, uh, thank you for being here this morning. And I hope you have uh, a great afternoon and good to see each of you. But let's pray as we close. Father God, thank you for uh, your blessings in our lives. Father, uh, you have been generous uh, to us in sending your son Christ in forgiveness, in in mercy, in grace. Father, also financially, we, we are not sitting here hungry. We are not sitting here without shelter to go to from here. And so, Father, we know that we have been blessed by you. And, Father, may we uh, live lives surrendered to you. May we uh, serve you. May we uh, follow your leadership in our lives. And, Father, just the natural outworking of that is going to be generosity. And so, Father, uh, as you... As you bless us, we know that that is an opportunity for us to bless others. And so uh, may we have generous giving hearts as we have been generously given to by you uh, in abundance. So, Father, may our hearts reflect that. And, Father, we pray these things in the name of Christ, our Savior. Amen.